Great. So we've started recording. I'll put this away. And you just need, like every week, your um, project for your art package open. Let me make this a little bit bigger. All right. So um, this week, we will be creating a package down website. Um, so you've probably seen these package down websites. Let me have grab one, um, one not a site HR one. Let's get one for both. Okay, pop that over here. Um, all right, so package down websites tend to look like this for an R package. Uh, name the package, the released version, homepage, the reference, which gives you a list of all of the functions that are in your package with links to um, documentations that, that's created from the, the help files that we created earlier. Articles, which are your vignettes. So have an article there. And optionally, things like a change log. So as you, um, if you have a package where you're going to have multiple versions, it's going to keep changing, then you can keep a log of what's changed so people can see when you release a new version, what happened. All right. Um, pop this back to this side. Okay. So um, we're going to be starting in the chapter. And like always, we're going to do something that will normally take me about five minutes, and then I'm going to explain the heck out of it, um, which will take a whole hour. So um, we need use this, like always, to get things set up first. So use package down will set up a bunch of things in your package. Let me just double check that I'm in the right package. Yep. Okay. So that should go pretty quick. It does a few things. Um, it creates package down.yaml file, makes a docs folder, um, or well, it adds your docs folder and that package down YAML and package down folder to our build ignore, because these are um, things that are gonna be in your project that aren't necessary to build the package itself. It's a sort of add on extra um, documentation. So you wanna ignore them when you're building, otherwise you're gonna get um, error messages when you try to run command check or build your package and install your package. Um, it adds the docs to .git ignore, so it won't, um, if you've got git on, if you don't have git on, it's gonna, that won't happen yet, but we aren't gonna talk about git for two more chapters. And then it creates um, this package down .yaml file. So this is what it looks like. We're not gonna fuss with it right now. The URL is for, um, it's assuming you're gonna do something like share this on GitHub or Bioconductor or somewhere that the package is gonna be online and the documentation at least is gonna be online. So you need to put the URL there. We'll ignore that for now. And then gives you the default bootstrap five template. You can change templates, but we're gonna leave it alone for now. It's, I think it's nice that most our documentation um, kind of has the same look and feel and so whenever you go to our documentation, it's easy to find what you're looking for because it's all formatted the same way. Um, all right. And in the book, it does say, if you already have GitHub set up with your package, you can instead use, um, use, oh well, here, I'll type it here. Use this, use package on GitHub pages. And that sets things up a little bit differently. Um, for using GitHub pages, but we won't tackle that until we get to the, the GitHub chapter. All right. So I actually, look, there's so much stuff here in your um, um, main directory. I don't like the package down YAML to, to be out there as well, because you're eventually going to have to have some more things inside of a package down directory. So what I like to do is just make a package down directory. Um, you can make it using the little folder thing here or with the console, do your create package down. And then you can move um, package down to YAML into there. So you can click that, click the little gear and move to, or there is some code in the book. 
So, and if you do that, then this file looks like it's been deleted. So yes, we close that because now it's inside package down. And that just keeps like all the package down stuff together, but you don't have to move it if you don't want to. All right. So the next thing that we're gonna do is just build the package down site. So back in the console again, package, yep, package down, build underscore site. That's gonna build everything. And hopefully there won't be errors, but we might need to clean up a few errors. Um, it's gonna do a bunch of stuff. It'll install your package temporarily so that um, all of your code can use your package. It's gonna copy a bunch of stuff back and forth um, for setting up the website. And it's going to um, take all of the help files that you created with, um, with Roxygen and turn them into web pages. So all these reference pages. And then it's also gonna knit all of your vignettes and make an index and then preview site. So it should pop up wherever. Um, so whether it's in the viewer pane or in a um, external web browser, this depends on the settings of your RStudio. And if it doesn't pop up, you can go into um, docs, click on index.html and view in web browser. Okay, let's do that, there we go. So hopefully this will have worked. Can you put a thumbs up or a thumbs down in the chat for if it worked or put a thumbs up if you're just following along and you're gonna like actually do the coding a bit later. All right, still building might take a little bit. Um, but hopefully it will look like this when you've created it. If you made a vignette with us last week, and named it demo package. It'll be here under get started. That was our demo package overview. And then all of our um, functions here will have their documentation. So we have the general usage, explanation of all the arguments, your examples here, um, and what the return value is. Round zero. All right. Has anybody had any errors? It would be awesome if we're all error free today. Okay. Tom, is yours built now? Uh, yeah, thanks, Lisa. Yeah, I was I was just building it on another package that I've got, not the demo package, which is probably uh, why it's taking a while. Yeah, yeah. If you've got extensive vignettes, it's gonna knit all those and etc. Okay, yeah. sounds like it's it's working all right. Um, Sam's got a warning message: the vignette title specified in vignette entry is different from the title. All right, that is a common um, warning. So if we pop into vignettes. You'll get your demo package here. Um, this title, demo package overview, copy that and put it in here. It ought to be the same so that it lists um, in the index um, as the same name. If you are really insistent that it should have a different name, I'm gonna put it on you. That It will tell you how to fix that if you look up the documentation. Um, or how to sort of ignore that warning. Okay, back to, all right. So this is the like basic, you've done it. You now have a package down website, but we're gonna work on um, doing a few customizations to it of like cool things that you might've seen that you might wanna put on your page. Um, one of them is a citation file. Do you want to control how the citations look for your um, for your package? So right now, if you do citation um, demo package, you should get an automatically generated citation of it's a manual. The title is demo package colon 
whatever the um, description is in your description file. So it takes information from this description file, demo package. Um, uh, hold on, maybe I have a citation file. Sometimes I make things here when I'm testing things out and don't delete them. Um, where is it getting data and analysis? The title here is demo package. Dun, dun, dun. Hmm. Okay, I'm not quite sure where it's getting at. And then the author year, package version, and for me, the URL, because I have it linked to a GitHub site. Um, Senya, your, your vignette's missing. Um, hold on. Oh, so the, let's look. You won't have um, vignettes articles if you named your only vignette um, demo package because then it's it shows under that getting started title. Let's I'll show you the example here. Um, open in web browser, pop that back over. So like I don't have a articles section here because the only vignette is the getting started vignette that should be here. And that's a, a special category for the vignette that has the same name as the package name. Um, if you make more vignettes, then they'll, you'll get an articles tab. Okay, citation file. Let's make ourselves a citation. Um, and again, use this is always useful. So in the console, use this, use citation, and it will create an inst directory, I-N-S-T, if you don't have one, and put a citation file in there. So what the inst directory um, is, is a place to put files that your R package needs to use. Um, so you could put raw data files in there, although we don't really need to, um, but there's some circumstances like if you wanted to demonstrate how do you read a CSV file in, you need, and you need to supply literally a CSV file, not the um, R object of an already read in CSV file, then you can put that in inst. Um, and then you put, put other resources in there as well, like images that um, your, your package might need. So citation files are one of those files that your package might need. And it goes in the inst directory. Um, and then they will give you a sort of outline that looks like this that you can start putting in, um, assuming that your package is tied to a published journal article, you can use this site entry. Um, what the site entry does is create a citation, but does not show people the BibTeX um, citation itself. So, and you can put more than one citation in there as well. So you can reference um, like the package itself or the package manual or um, associated articles, more than one of them. You can put as many as you want here of different site entries. Site entries just show you the citation. I like um, a bib entry better. So I'm gonna copy the bit from the chapter. Um, so instead, I've put a little bit of, um, in case I wanted to cite a manual and something else, I've put some of these up here as variables. So this can all be R code, um, although it won't format like R code because it's in a citation file that doesn't have that R in the end. Um, there's this header that kind of prints out first when you look at the citation. And then I've got a title here, and the URL, the year. And so meta is um, a variable that will, that will exist when the citation file um, gets read, but it doesn't exist right now and I'm not quite sure how to get it. Um, but it just gives the, like, the date from your description file. Um, so it just grabs the, the year. Um, and then the note, our package version meta version, grabs the version number from your description file. So just 
a few ways to get some information automatically so you don't have to keep updating year or the package version every time you up. So your citation file can just be created once and then it will update itself sort of from the description. I wonder if we use meta to grab the package description. Anyways, um, so the bib entry for an R package generally is a, um, a citation to the manual that you that we're creating right now. Um, so the it's a bib type here. So this is set up a little bit differently from site entry. Um, so the bib type is manual. It would be article if you're citing a, an article. Then we need a title. You can set up the author in this sort of way. Um, so you concatenate together person objects that have first and last name. Um, year, a note. So the note is the package version. URL, if you have one, you can skip that if you don't. And oh, this is why. So I don't have to duplicate all of this because you can also, you also need to put a text version in. So all of this information generates the, um, the LaTeX or the BibTeX um, entry. And then you can also show the people like how you want it parsed together. So if you sort yours out this way, um, you just need to change really the author here from the demo code online. And we save that. And then all you need to do is reload your package. Um, so it's the dev tools load all. I'm doing it with a keyboard shortcut on a Mac at shift command L. You can also reload it in the build tab under load all if you're more of a pointy clicky person. And now citation demo package should look like this. So you get that site header to site demo package and publications use, and then it will show you the text version. And then it will show you a bib tech entry for LaTeX users, which I find helpful because I can just copy paste that into um, my bib tech file if I want to cite it in our stuff that I'm using. Um, can you get persons from the description via meta too? I am not 100% sure. Um, oh, the name is in curly braces because um, we want to keep it lowercase. And so LaTeX tries to title case things. Um, will automatically title case things depending on the style of your um, your CSL style. So like APA is title, not really title case, they just capitalize the first letter in a title. So it would make that D in demo package uppercase no matter what. But if you put curly brackets around it, it'll stop it doing like automatic upper lower casing of stuff, which also like potentially I should put um, curly brackets around my name because otherwise it will lowercase the B for me sometimes in certain packages, which you can also do that if you've got like a name that is unusually capitalized, um, certain styles will just mangle it. So if things are getting mangled, um, surround them with curly braces and that usually tells LaTeX um, or like anything using a BibTeX entry that leave this alone, don't change the capitalization. Um, so basically, do we need them in the text version is basically a kind of trial and error. Um, so I don't really need it around my name because it hasn't mangled my name. Um, that, this all looks fine. Um, But, ah, which, yeah, so in the text version, we probably don't need the curly braces, but because I'm using title up here, I don't care, I'm just gonna keep it in there. But you could you could put instead of the title here, like this version of the title and take the curly braces out of the text version. So here we are, this is the copy paste 
text version. This is the BibTeX one where that keeps demo package lowercase. Um, it's a good note. Okay, so now we can, if your package down doesn't take too long to build, let's um, package down. But we are going to just build the home page actually. So your whole package down, like if you've got Tom's package down, um, or project, um, you might have a lot of vignettes to build um, and lots of reference to build if you have a lot of functions. You don't necessarily wanna to have to remake those every time you change something. So if you know where the thing is that you're changing, so the citation should show up on the home page. we're just gonna rebuild the home page. So build home. And that should go faster because all that does is read the license file um, and the description file takes all of that and reads the um, readme.md and puts that together. So now we should see here a citation listing in the right hand column. Make that a little bit bigger for you guys. Um, so when you click on citing demo package, you get um, a page that's authors and citation. So it's reading the authors um, from the description page because that's where the ORC ID is. And it even has like a little ORC ID icon. Oh, lovely. Um, and then renders the citation here. So this is a nice way to have a standard place for the citation to be for your package. So we can close that and the description. Oops. I don't know why the site map's open. And close package on YAML as well. Okay. So the next thing that you might want to do is add a logo. Um, hex stickers are sort of the, the tradition for our packages, but you don't have to have a hex sticker. You can have any image you want as a logo. Um, but I have, um, let's grab. I'm gonna make an R script here with some code to create a logo. Um, now, this there's one caveat here, this package might not work for everybody, but um, we need ggplot2 and a package called hex sticker. So if you haven't installed hex sticker yet, um, cause I only put that in the chapter like an hour ago, um, try to install it. It might work. If it doesn't work, you can ignore this part and just go find like a small image that you like that you want to become the logo um, and know where the image is. And, I'll sh and then you can skip this part of making the hex sticker bit. And then we can um, use your other image for the logo. So like you can, if you don't have any images, go on Google and search for logo and download something generic. Um, but the hex sticker package, um, it requires you to have image magic available on your computer, which we don't have time to install right now if you don't have it. And if you're on a Mac, you might need to install exports and then reinstall um, was it sysfont for the fonts to work. Like it worked fine on my computer, but also I use image magic all the time. So that was already set up here. Okay, so if it is working, um, Oh, Tom, yes, the, before we do that, I'm gonna answer this question. So the code for year here, um, this is basically anything, it's, a, it's regex for in the year, grab anything that's dash and more characters. So like date is going to be formatted like, um, year, 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 month, month, day, day, right? So this takes a dash plus the dot in regex um, refers to any character and the star means zero or more. So if we have a dash followed by zero or more characters, delete it. So we're gonna substitute dash followed. So as soon as it finds the first dash all the way to the end of the line, we're gonna get rid of it. So it just grabs all of that and gets rid of it. So if we ran this, you would get um, 
oh, this, this isn't our code, or it's not in our file. So I actually have to copy paste it down here. We'll just give you the why, why, why. So anything after the first dash. Um, okay. Um, where you, can, you can use other ways of parsing the first four characters out of meta dollar sign date if you want. Where is meta? What's okay? So meta is um, created from the description file. Okay. So meta date, meta version. Um, so I'm assuming you can use everything else. So meta authors. Let's see if this works because I haven't tried this before. So authors equals. We'll just do meta authors. Um, and then what? Load demo package and citation. Did it author C and uh, no, that did not work. Like it's done <laughs> something, but not what I expected it to. Yeah. Um, it's just that mine's not pulling in a year, but I think it's because I don't have a year in my description file. So. Right. Ah, yeah. If you don't have a year in your description file, that's not going to work. So you can manually right. make the year 2022, and then you have to edit it every time the year changes and you make a new version, which okay. is fine. Cool. You can you can do this all completely manually, um, but here are some some tricks to be able to get stuff out of the description file. That so you only need to change them here and not also in other places, because ideally and information is like stored only in one place. And then when it needs to be the same in other places, it reads it from the original place. So things yeah. aren't too confusing, but. So in my description file, should that date be automatically updated when I build the package or? or... So, no, oh, I mean, you, you should be updating the date automatically or yourself when you've got a new version. So if I update the version to like, and seven and what's today is 16th. Um, right. So you now, don't use the, because there's a use this function, isn't there? Um, use version or something, which which will- Yes, there is. And I find that that's one of the functions that confuses me yeah. so much because it does other things as well as change the version with your, if you've got it linked to GitHub. Um, so I yeah. did it manually. But OK, so see, I updated this to um, version 9007. And now it's automatically updated here and here. Yeah. Cool, thank um, you. Yep, yeah, so yeah, I'm not sure what else you can, what else you can grab from here. Um, you could grab the, maybe, maybe the description. The author seems to be doing something a little bit weird, possibly having to do with this. Um, parsing the, the C there, but it's a good idea. I will look into that later. All right, so this file, I'm gonna save it because um, this is something we're gonna use to create our logo. It's just like extraneous R code. It's not part of our package. Um, so we don't save it in R. I'm gonna save it inside a package down and just call it logo.r. So the package down file like doesn't get parsed when um, you're creating your, your package. So you can kind of dump stuff in there that you're not gonna use um, or that you wanna keep, keep out of the package environment. All right, so we're loading ggplot2 and hopefully hex sticker um, work for people. And then the chapter has a bunch of code. So we can copy this code um, so hex sticker lets you, um, make a hex sticker that has stuff. So generally the name of your package and a picture underneath it and the picture you can create with ggplot. So, um, I've got a little bit of code so you can make a heart with math. Um, so if you just run that code, make heart plot, it will look like this. So we've got a plot that's got hearts. You can, you can make any plot you would like, but. And then the hex sticker sticker function saves the file. You should save it in inst figures logo.png. This includes your, um, like your full resolution logo in um, 
in the package. And you can also, um, there's a bunch of subplot aesthetics. So subplot is, well, let's just look and see what does it look like. So this code that I've got here makes the hex sticker, saves it here, and then I'm piping this to the plot function. Plot will preview it over here or wherever your, your plot's open. All right. So you can, um, subplot is the spot we made up here. You can see how wide and how tall it is. So I could make it a bit shorter. Squish that heart down. I don't like that. Um, SX1 and SY are, I think some have to do with the location of the image. We put the package name in here. We could make package name a little bit bigger and change the package name color. Um, hexagon aesthetics, so the size of the, um, what's it called, the border and fill and color. So we can make this one in hot pink instead. Ooh, that's not, that's no good. Make that hot pink. A little bit better. Um, you know what? I make the heart hot pink too then. There we go. Um, and then there's a URL which you can hardly see here. It's very tiny and up along the side. And you can, you've got to kind of um, trial and error the size to make it fit right and visible. Um, but let's make this black as well so we can see it a little bit better on there. So that will make our image, but if you can't get um, hex sticker to work, just grab your actual image and save it as logo.png or whatever inside of inst figures. So we're gonna go to inst figures, got our logo file. All right. Um, ooh, you can get meta with, thank you, Sonia. Okay, we're gonna go back and forth here as I notice your comments. So meta equals package description, demo package. Not, could spell that better. So what have we got here? Uh, yeah, you gotta like really parse out that authors yourself. Um, and then description URL. So we could could have grabbed the URL from the URL. Um, Etc. Ah, oh, nice. Thank you. I will add that to the the book. Um, Katarina, ggplot is so good. There's like a few general principles that you have to learn, and then all of a sudden everything will click, and you'll know how to do everything. It's just like the the gap between not knowing those few principles and knowing them. You feel like you can do nothing, nothing, nothing at all. And then all of a sudden, everything makes sense. Um, so it's super frustrating when you're down here. And then, like, it'll happen in a day or two that everything will make sense. And you'll understand what all of the functions do. I really love ggplot, but also hated it at first. Um, OK, so we've got a logo. Somehow you've created it with this package or you've copied it in. Um, and then our next step is a use this function like always. So, and use this functions almost always go in the console. Use this, we're gonna use logo and you gotta say where the logo is. So inst figures logo PNG, use your autofill. And that is going to do a bunch of stuff. Um, it's gonna create the folder where the, um, the resized version of this logo. So I say to put the full size version inside of the inst figures directory, then you know it's always there and you can use it for whatever purposes, um, but it needs to be resized for the, um, the web page. So it gets resized, 
put in the right place. And then they also give you um, some code to include it in your README um, that gets copied to the clipboard automatically. So if you pop back in the demo package and readme.rmd, and we scroll down to um, below the vendor ops chunk, it should be around line 16. It just says hash space demo package. Paste it there. So that's what it needs to look like to, to show up in the place that people normally expect a logo to be. So you can save that. And then you can knit it by just like click the knit button. Or you can um, build the README. So with DevTools, DevTools build README. Either way, if you edit the RMD file again, remember that um, package down and the um, sort of built in vignettes of your package come from the .md version of it. So you have to knit it to md. Um, all right. So whenever you change the logo, you need to run package down init site. To initialize your site, it's going to, because you don't have any fab icons, it's going to generate them for you. If you, if you have already put fab icons, these are the, you know, like the little icon that's in the um, title bar when you go to a website that might be, that's kind of similar to the logo. Um, that's what those are. They're little tiny icons. Um, so you need a web connection to do this. It sends your logo to a fab icon generator and that sends back um, a bunch of PNGs, the Apple touch icon. So if somebody like saves your, um, your manual, your online manual, if they want it to be like on their phone as a, a logo or as a, um, like an app, that will be the size that Apple needs to make the, the logo. So it does all of that. In the, um, the book, it says now to build fab icons. We don't need to because this has already happened. But if you update the logo now again and you do build in it, it'll just update the logo and not the fab icons. So you need to like do those manually. But we don't need to do them manually right now because they were already created. And our next step is just to rebuild the home page of our package down site. So it'll include the, um, what's it called? Include the logo. And hopefully your um, logo front, your package down front page will look like this now. Please put a thumbs up into the chat if it does, or if it, like, if this has worked for you. What did you just run? I... Oh, um, I just ran package down, build home. So, yeah. Are these like final steps that you have to do each time? Are these summarized? Are these over in the textbook? I'm just- they are, Yeah, they're all in the, the textbook. Um, yeah. where, where is the textbook? over here. So yep, yeah, this bit, we're on 7.4. So there's the, so you do the use this, use logo. So whenever you change this logo in Inst figures, if you decide, oops, I want another logo, you save it to Inst figures logo, you run use this, and then you run all these things. Um, so you've got to init the site, it copies the logo to the place where it needs to be, build the new fab icons, um, rebuild the README. Um, might not, that you might not have to do that if all you've done is um, update the logos, um, if you've not changed the README at all. And then, but this is fast. And then rebuild the homepage. Because all of this, every step of this copies that logo to another place that it needs to be. I think it's a little bit excessive, but, um, because it makes in the docs folder, all of everything in the docs folder has to be standalone. So it's got to copy the logo over there as well. And that happens when you do build home. And but that needs the logo to be in a different place that's 
done by init site. Um, this is too many steps, I think, but it is, is what it is. Um, so the warning here, if you, if you try to just build home, sometimes you get a message that package down can only use images in man figures and vignettes. And then you look and you're like, my logo is in man figures. Um, this is like a red herring kind of warning. And it means you need to run this in its site thing, which will copy the logo from man figures to another place that it needs to be in order for package down to work. So this is really frustrating um, when you get that and you think it is, it, it definitely is in man figures and I can see it when I knit the readme, but it's not in my package down site. Um, the kind of torch everything to the ground and start again of um, build site does everything. It does the initialization, builds your homepage, builds your references again, builds your vignettes um, and can take a while. But if like things aren't working, just run build site and it will kind of delete everything and restart the whole process. So it takes a lot longer, but um, we'll usually get all this like steps you might've missed. Okay, so one sec. All right. Um, you don't have, okay. If you don't have Inst Figures logo, Senya, um, but the logo does show on the website, it means that when you added it to man figures, that, that was good enough. Um, I like to keep a copy of the, the full size logo in Inst Figures because um, that one should be bigger than um, at least the way I'm making it. Where's my Inst Figures logo? Yep, and then the one in the man figures logo is a teeny version. So I like to have a high res version so I can use it for various things. Um, and then you have a, a low res version for the website because you don't want to be serving images that are bigger than people need. Like if they're trying to access it on their phones, why are you giving them an enormous image that you're gonna shrink down to just a few pixels? Um, So that's why my recommendation is save like the original high res version in Inst Figures logo, and that's where you can grab it from and resize it for various needs. Um, okay, and then the last thing that we have is badges. So you've probably seen this like badges start, badges end, but there's no badges, and maybe you want badges. Um, Especially if you're writing a package and putting it on CRAN, you want to advertise the fact it's on CRAN or it's on Bioconductor um, and you want some nice badges. So, but the badge that everybody can have is where in the life cycle your package is. So generally packages start out experimental, which flags to people that like it's still under development. Um, any function might change in the future and you're not committing to maintaining this in a way that doesn't break it. Whereas you could um, make the life cycle stable once you think you're happy with it and you're committed to, if you make changes, you're gonna definitely make a new version um, and explain like in a change log how things break, which we're not at that stage yet. So let's have an um, experimental one. And again, in the console, it's another use this. Um, use, whoops, uh, life cycle use lifecycle badge. And then we say which stage, there's four stages you can use. Um, where are they again? Experimental, stable, deprecated, or superseded. So deprecated means we're not gonna use this anymore. It's we're phasing it out, which is usually used for um, functions rather than a whole package. And superseded is like, don't use, it's again, mostly for functions. Like don't use this one. There's another one that you should be using. So we will designate our whole package as experimental. And you've got to spell this right or weird things happen. Um, and then it pops the badge in here and tells you to re-knit readme. You can do it with DevTools, build readme, or you can click the knit button.
the, um, the advantage of DevTools build readme to the knit button is that if you haven't loaded your, um, your package into the environment you, and you use the package like in your, um, oh yeah, we don't have any, there's nothing in this readme that, um, did we make a readme? Yes, okay. Turn it, like, when did we make a readme? Um, but because the, the contents of my readme are a bit about, about the class, about coding club, um, which you probably don't have in your readme. Um, right, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, yeah. So the, the advantage to DevTools build readme is that it makes sure that um, the most up-to-date version of demo package is being used to render your RMD file if you use any functions from your package in the RMD file. Um, but otherwise you just, you can click net. So we've built the readme and now we are gonna go look at our um, badges, but we've got to build home again. So package down, build home. And you should get a new section in your um, sidebar called dev status. It should say lifecycle experimental. So you can wait for people to get that done. Put a thumbs up if you've got it done and it worked. Get rid of, I did that. just like accumulating. Um, boom. Okay. Yeah. All right. No questions yet. All right. So the other thing that we can do with badges, um, and this is so. Oh, use this has a bunch of other badge stuff, but use this. Use um, badge. Just gonna look at the help for use badge. And that will tell you a little bit about all of the badge functions they have. So there's CRAN badge you can get, Bioconductor, this lifecycle badge, binder if you're, if you're putting your package on my binder, um, and our Studio Cloud badges. So you can share your package in any of these ways. And I'll be covering um, as many of them as I can in the sharing chapter that I have not written yet. Um, but there's also another package um, called Badger. So um, I'm just gonna tuck this down here for now. Library Badger. It has got the same installation issues as Hexsticker. It's written by the same guy. Um, so if Hexsticker didn't work for you, Badger probably won't work either because it needs image magic um, and the exports sys fonts thing. But if you actually no, Badger might work even if you don't have those things. Um, so try Badger even if that didn't work. But it will let you do things like um, add a DOI badge, which is quite cool. So there's a function badge underscore DOI, and you just pop your DOI in as the first argument. And whatever color you want the badge to be is the second argument. Um, so you can find that color. And if you want to see all of the colors, I made a thing. Um, let me see, where's the best place? Um, it's in our applied data skills book. Uh, ba -bum. Seven plots. Okay, I'm gonna put this in the chat. Move that over. No, that's not what I wanted to move over. Get back over there. Um, so if you ever want to like find some color names, I know you can use hex colors and everything else, but um, I made a little web interface that shows you all of the colors that there are in, in R, and then you can go, go copy them. So light salmon, let's say. So you can pick your favorite color. 
Um, so you run that code and it actually doesn't do anything except um, give you some text that you can copy. Don't copy the quotation marks here and paste into the readme. So I'm gonna pop that up here. Um, so it uses um, this image.shields.io. Ooh, you even get a little like highlight thing um, to create your badge, get your color number here, and then it links to the DOI. Inside of these two square brackets, um, you need to put something for people who use screen readers. So they can't see this. It, you don't want it to read out this URL to them that's of no use. So um, I would put here like DOI colon um, the DOI. So like, and the end. So I know this gets parsed kind of weird with the, the highlighting here, but um, just inside those first, that first set of square brackets that's got nothing in it, always put something for screen readers. So we can do that and um, renit, or yeah, rebuild our, we gotta renit this because it's in the readme. So um, I'm gonna not renit it and show you what happens all the time with me. I'm gonna build home, nope, build home. And then I look at it and I'm like, I just made that change. Why is it not showing up? It's cause I didn't knit the readme. So I gotta go knit this. Um, and then sort of in the actual readme that you see on GitHub, if you're gonna put it on GitHub, the badges are up here. But when you um, build your package down site, Badges, uh, what is that badge? What have I done? Do I need, maybe I need no spaces between badges start and end. If so, that's a, yeah, okay. So we can't have spaces between the badges. That is something I did not know. Um, and then they both pop down here under dev status. Um, so there's that badger, um, right here. So badger, it's got badge DOI. It's got a whole bunch of badge functions. Um, so you've got alt metrics, bioconductor, like, um, so actually what might be, if you've got a package on CRAN, you can get a badge for how many times it's been downloaded. Um, whether it passes the CRAN checks. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we can talk about next week with um, package maintenance about like automated checking of your package that like all your tests are working, how much of your package is covered by tests that you can sign up to continuous integration services like Travis or CodeCov. Um, and then it automatically runs all these checks and that will update your, your badges can um, link to these automatic checks. And that's when you see a badge that says like, um, our command check passed or failed. So they fail all the time or code coverage 45%. Um, that's how you make those. But- I'm not sure I understand. What? This watch talks to me too much. Um, what was a, oh, I was gonna, there's a custom one, like a totally custom one. Um, so you can link to anything you want with any text you want. And um, that you do something like um, your org ID. So the, the first argument is the text you want on the left. The second argument is the text you want on the right. Third argument is the color. Now this one is, it's called X and Y. And then there's your link color and then the URL that you want it to link to if somebody clicks on it. So then you get this custom badge that you can again, copy into um, your readme. Do not skip spaces. Make sure you put in some sort of text for screen readers. I'm gonna just put org ID colon 
there, save that, and edit, and then rebuild the home. And now I've got totally custom badge, Dodger blue background, if I click on it, it goes to my record page. Um, all right, oh, it's one pass, sorry. Um, I was thinking I didn't have enough to talk about today. But um, yeah, so that is it. The sort of um, further reading and further practice are pretty much the same thing. So further, further reading is the package on manual. It's really good. Um, and then I, the further practice says, you know, have a look at um, the customizing your site vignette and see what you want to customize. So you can set themes and do all sorts of stuff. Um, but it's a really nice way to, to make a manual that looks like you expect our manuals to look like. All right. Hopefully I will see you guys next week. Um, and then I'm on strike the week after. So I'm going to stop, stop the share here and stop the, where do we go? Stop the recording. <laughs>